Hey there viewers and welcome back to another fun episode of Grumpy Monkey Garage. We work in the automotive industry, which means we frequently have to fix cars. Well, fixing cars involves paying money to fix cars, so we have seen some financial mental breakdowns in our time. Which led me to this video, the top five financial mistakes you can make uh, being a consumer in the automotive world. All right, let's get off to number one. I got my notes here. Uh, any European piece of crap. Anything came out of Europe. We're here in the U.S. of A. Land of the free and bald eagles. If it came from overseas, from Europe, uh, it's garbage, and you're going to have a meltdown at the counter when you get a quote to fix that stuff. Uh, even the cheapest Volkswagens are going to cost a lot more than their domestic or Asian counterparts to fix. It is ridiculously expensive. A lot of parts are on indefinite back order right now. Everything's a pain in the butt to get, so uh, don't get one of these, or you are going to be paying through the nose. I know some of them are incredibly safe. Volvo's very safe. Lots of luxury cars come out of Europe. They're very nice, so nice. They don't have cup holders. Uh, these cars are junk. Don't buy any of this. Um, I don't have anything positive to say about European cars. They're hard to fix. They're expensive to own. They're expensive to buy. They're just junk. Don't get one unless you're prepared to afford it. This video is called Financial Disasters, Not Style Disasters. These are financially depreciating, horrible cars. Do not buy them. Number two meltdowns we see, which is really just, you know, kind of commonplace these days. Anybody who's got a diesel pickup truck in a diesel repair shop is uh, dying right now. Uh, everything's expensive. Here in the U.S., you really only get three choices for diesel trucks because, you know, free market. Who needs that, right? So we have the Dodge with the Cummins. We have the uh, Ford with the Power Joke. And we have the, uh, the Dirty Max, the Chevy Duramax diesel. Uh, all three are expensive to own. I'm not talking about reliability. I know they pull really strong and they're great and reliable and all this crap. Here's a picture of F-250s with cabs off. Okay, that's what you have to do to work on these engines. You think that's cheap? No. Then the parts are expensive. Here's the price of a couple injectors. You want that? You want to deal with that? No. Let's uh, compare that to a gasoline injector price right here. And here's a gasoline truck in the shop with the hood open, you know, where you're supposed to be working on stuff. You don't have to remove the whole cab. Uh, it's a lot cheaper to fix a gas truck. Do you need a diesel pickup? If you don't, do not attach your masculinity to your truck. That is stupid. Um, get you something that is reasonable for the task you're getting it for. If you're driving to an office job in an F-250, you're an idiot, all right? That is, that is such a waste of resources and money. It is ridiculous. But uh, once every three years, I pull a camper. Okay, well, you know what? A gas Hemi will pull that just fine, too. So will an LS-based engine. There's, there's no reason for this. This is ridiculous. You just want to look like this guy. And uh, that... No. You're, you're going to get mad at the repair bills, or you just have unlimited money to blow, and then you don't care if it's a financial disaster. These are not good for anyone's wallets. Stupid. Unless you're hot shot driving or pulling every single day where you need the power to tow, and even then... A lot of our companies are switching over to gas. Diesel's huge financial mistake right now, especially due to all the emissions. And here in Georgia, we do have an emissions compliance, but it's only for gassers right now. But I'm sure the federal government's cracking down elsewhere. Diesels and emissions, you, it makes them more unreliable. You have to fix all kinds of crap with them. Number three, because this isn't a, just a diesel video. Anything heavily modified. Now, by this, I mean you bought it. So we have... Post-purchase inspection, which is dumb because you should bring it in for a pre-purchase inspection. Always get your cars inspected before you buy them, but nope, this person bought it, came in, it needs $3,000 worth of work. It's a car that's worth about $2,500 in my opinion, and uh, they're crying about it, talking about how much they just spent buying it. Well, you bought something heavily modified and they didn't do it right, which unfortunately, I don't really see a lot of right ways to modify things. If you're out there and you modify your own cars, that's fine. This is for consumers, meaning you bought it and you're bringing it to a shop to get fixed. If now I have to go hunting for parts and that engine didn't come in that car, now it's a whole lot more work. It, it's just a nightmare. It is a nightmare to work on modified cars. We have to charge for the time and headache it takes. Modified cars are expensive to own. Financial disaster is the whole name of the video. So anything super modified, different exhaust, it's got a different PCM, it's got all this you know shift kit and all this crap in it, now it's gonna be expensive to take care of. Don't need that nonsense in your life. It's very expensive. Uh, next is going to be, we see a lot of Nissans with this right now, and I've labeled this just kind of Nissan, but uh, a lot of Altimas, Sentras, and Rogues come in. We get a lot of, a lot of tears are shed over these cars. Yep, you need a CVT. Nope, we can't get you a used one. They're not available, and you can have a new one in six months. But I'm making payments on this car. 
How can I, I can't drive it? What am I gonna do? You should have bought a Toyota, which you can see in our top five cars to buy video, or you should have bought a Camry and not an Altima, but here you are. And uh, I didn't design it, I didn't buy it. I can only tell you what's wrong with it and your CVT chain is no mas, just like they all are. So a lot of crying about Nissans with the broken CVTs. You can't get a transmission right away. They're usually a couple days out and they're very expensive. And that's if they're a couple days out. Some models we've seen, like some of the newer Rogue, we can't, we can't get transmission at all for those. So be very careful with what you buy. And if you buy something, you're making payments on it, it takes a huge repair bill. You know, maybe listen to the Toyota Camry you should have bought because you don't even need an SUV. All right, uh, next is big trucks. Big trucks in general. I don't think a lot of you use your trucks as trucks. Here's some pictures of my trucks doing truck stuff. See this? This is what trucks are for, okay? If you're not doing this, you don't need one. You don't. Well, but occasionally I put a cooler in the back. You can put a cooler in a Camry. All right, you can. I I'm sick of it down here in the south. It's a huge thing. Everybody's got their masculinity or their whole personality tied to their vehicle and it's usually a big truck of some sort f-150 with a lift kit big stupid tires now i need a ladder to get up there to check your oil it's a whole ordeal i hate it i hate big trucks they're stupid the further up in height you go with a truck imagine using the bed now you got to like lift a sofa over your head to help your friend move no Nope, you won't. You're gonna rent a U-Haul, which means the whole purpose of having the truck is now mute. It is dumb. You're the reason truck beds are getting shorter and shorter, and I don't like you. Big trucks are ridiculous. You're not, what, you can't justify this to me. I want worse gas mileage and more expensive tires and to pay for driveline repairs constantly so that everybody knows I have a small pee pee. What, what is your purpose? Get a truck that works for your job that you're doing or don't get a truck if you don't need one. Absolutely ridiculous to be this ridiculous. Uh, bonus, bonus on the list. A lot of people are asking me what car I should buy, what should I get, my kid needs a car, we're looking at, and then they'll list something absolutely ridiculous like a large SUV. Yeah, my daughter, she's 16, she needs a first car, we're thinking about a Grand Cherokee, we're thinking about this Pathfinder, we're thinking about this Honda Pilot. Those are big family cars. What are you, uh, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, I want her to be safe. What's wrong with this? What's 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 wrong with this? Here's a Camry. Look at this. Very safe. Very safe. Easy to drive. You know what? You're not a very good driver when you're a teenager. How about a Corolla? Look at that right there. That's what you need. You don't need a big vehicle if you don't need a big vehicle. What? Why are people allergic to sedans here in the U.S.? What's going on? It's just it doesn't make any sense. These do a lot of the job. Most people do. And they just want something big to feel big. I don't get it. It's very aggravating and frustrating. And they come in for repairs on big SUVs and big SUVs cost more to maintain that little Corolla. Uh, you know, Honda Pilot timing belt, they weren't prepared for it. Here comes the tears. It's just what you, just what you gotta deal with. Camry, no timing belt. Corolla, no timing belt. Well, unless you go back far enough. Some of the really old ones did, but still it doesn't cost near as much as a V6 Honda Pilot. Jeep Cherokee, great vehicle for a family. If you need a family vehicle or if you're hauling stuff, pulling stuff, not crapping on these vehicles per se, but if you don't need it, don't buy it. Buy what you need and use it and take care of it. That's what you need to do. That's kind of the point of this whole video. The financial mistakes are usually, minus Nissan, are usually stuff that you bought that you didn't need. You didn't need it, you bought it anyway, and now you've got a financial disaster on your hands. Be reasonable with what you want to get and you'll have a much better time. We'll see you next time on Grumpy Monkey Garage. Stay safe out there and be reasonable.